Streaming live from Union Lumber Company Store, Mendocino TV brings you Mendocino Media Makers. Hosted by Lindy Peters. Good evening and welcome once again to Mendocino Media Makers. You know, the future of television is on the internet, so welcome to the future. This is an interactive show. You can join us by calling in 964-1010. You can go online and uh, you'll see a little box there that you can, uh, you know, type in a question. So it's interactive if you want to join us. This is live. We are live in our studios here, tucked away in the company store. And we've got a great show for you here tonight. And Mendocino Media Makers likes to try and give you an idea of some of the calendar of events that come up here. We've got some great shows coming up here locally. We like to plug our local artists and media makers. So tonight I want to mention that uh, showing right now at the Mendocino Theater Company, it's Boy Gets Girl. For tickets, call 937-4477. That runs Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sundays. And uh, this weekend, Hit and Run and Friends have a comedy show. They're great, improv comedy. This will be at the Hill House Saturday. Uh, and it'll be at 7.30 p.m. This is part of the Mendocino Stories uh, feature, so you can call 937-1732 for more information. But uh, Hit and Run always put on a great show. Doug Nunn, Steve Weingarten, uh, Jill Yahulka, all of them. Just a, a great uh, a comedy troupe. We're lucky to have them here locally. Uh, the International Wildlife Film Festival is going on in Ukiah. That's at the Ukiah Civic Center, if we have any folks in cyberspace listening in Ukiah tonight. And that is tomorrow night, uh, Friday night. And also coming up, and uh, we might even get a cheer in our studio audience when I mention this show, coming up is the Susical the Musical. Woo! We're going to hear more about that show, and some of the cast members are here tonight, so I think you'll enjoy that as well. So we have a great show lined up for you here tonight, and a couple of guests that are very talented ladies. We're very lucky to have them here in our studios, and one of them, believe it or not, actually is involved with haunted houses. In fact, take, take a look at this.
Well, there you have it, folks. <laughs> that was either a haunted house or someone shopping at a late night gas station in Lakeport. <laughs> No, actually, that was a haunted house. And Cindy Lemos is our first guest. Cindy has done uh, a lot of things around here. She's done theater work. She's done musicals. Uh, she's involved producing the Susical, the musical we'll be talking about here in a bit, but also involved with haunted houses. So we're going to find out about Cindy, how she ended up here on the Mendocino Coast and ended up doing all these different things. Welcome to the show, Cindy. Well, hello. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Well, now, how'd you get here? How'd you get to the Mendocino Coast? That's one of my favorite questions to start things off here. Everybody has their own story. Some were, you know, lucky enough to just be here, I guess, but others uh, found their way here somehow. How about you? Well, my family's been here since the early 1800s, and so I have a home base that has been here for a long time. And I was actually born and raised in the Bay Area, but spent my summers here when mm -hmm. I was a kid. And I used to take classes at the Fort Bragg High School for summer school and do drama and all of that during our summer school sessions up here. And then I had said, one day I'll move up here. And so I did that permanently 25 years ago. How about that? So have you always been involved in theater then? I mean, in d starting with summer school at Fort Bragg High and some classes, yes. did that kind of give you the bug right there? Yeah, actually, since I was probably about two years old. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, I would walk around <laughs> with hairbrushes. And pretend yeah. I was a singer and yeah. I think my pivotal moment was uh, our sec my second grade teacher Mrs. Harvell thank you mm -hmm. uh, actually told my parents and wrote it on my report card that she needs to do ballet because she won't sit still How about and that? so she actually convinced my parents when I was in second grade to start taking ballet at that age Mm -hmm. And she reasoned with my mother and said that it will keep her focused and she will then learn how to uh, do math better because she's going to have to learn how to dance, learn about music, and she won't be so distracted. So Learn to sit still. Now, what about you? What did yeah, you think that of ballet never happened. <laughs> <laughs> What did you think of ballet lessons? I did loved you want to do it? You did? I loved it. Yeah, I, I just I dove into it and I took ballet for gosh about 13 years really? and then I taught ballet wow. and I was with um, the San Jose Ballet Troupe and that was awesome I really, really? enjoyed performing and yeah. being on the stage and then found a singing voice when I was in high school so I kind of went into the singing end of things instead of the actual physical part of dancing mm -hmm. I knew that being a ballerina, had a, it was a short-lived career. Right. So. Unless you're Russian. And that was Russian ballet that I took, <laughs> actually. Really? Yep. How about that? Yep. And actually, yeah. I have to tell you, what made me actually really quit was they wanted me to go to New York. But in order for me to do so, I would have to have surgery on both of my feet to remove my baby toes so that my point was more streamlined. And I said, uh, no, I like my feet. Really? Yep. And that's yeah. what ballerinas have done. My goodness. So. Well, that was probably a good career move. It was a very good career move. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. So uh, you got into singing a little bit then? Uh, mm -hmm. You said you found your voice. How did, uh, how did that come about? Oh, what that was in high school. And what, did you do some musicals in high school? Oh, yeah, school? Bye Bye Birdie. And uh -huh. we wrote our own fun ones. And um, we had... we created our own A Christmas Carol, but with carols, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of our projects were the students actually wrote and directed our own plays right. or musicals. And then, uh, of course, involved in uh, choir. That was a huge one. And back then, which is so sad nowadays, I look at the school systems and not having the arts. And right. back then, our choir, was it tra we traveled all over California because we were in competitions right. and mm -hmm. we were an awesome choir and it there was so much that we as kids learned when right. we were in music. You know when in high school back then long time ago uh, for him no they uh, <laughs> they used to have they actually had glee clubs and they you know this wasn't a TV show or an idea for a TV show right. these were singing groups similar to what you're talking mm -hmm. about that went around and and competed and uh, yeah. Well, so 
a career in music, a career in theater is not an easy thing. So obviously nope. you probably did something else. Did you did you have another job? Did you uh, meet somebody that you know helped you sort of decide what you were going to end up doing <laughs> by well, fault, or did you know how did it? Uh, well, how I did it pan out for you? I w I went of course I went to college and I was involved with um, early childhood development because I love okay. children. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in order to pay the bills, I was. Y typing was actually a requirement in high school back then. For and guys, too. And yeah. uh, so I was a very fast typer and so or typist. <laughs> what a surprise. She can't sit still, but she can type like a champion. <laughs> I did. Well, I that's bet. moving. <laughs> I know. That's what I'm <laughs> I saying. I was moving. And uh, so I was hired to be a legal secretary. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that put me through, like, some college time, paid the bills, and then I was actually a process server for the law firm and w wound up in a lounge where I had to serve somebody and there was a band playing and I said can I sing and that started it and then I got a band in the <laughs> Bay Area. I'm here to repossess uh -huh. your car. Uh, kind of. <laughs> no. It was pretty close. Really? <laughs> That's pretty. He that's wasn't happy when he got served. <laughs> that's not. <laughs> Didn't see that one coming. Mm -mm. Yeah. Okay. And then, so theater is, uh, you know, dance. We've talked to your ballerina uh, into singing. And then the theater, of course, uh, sort of combines both of them oftentimes if you're involved with musicals and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So did you, w did you then evolve into stage acting or community theater while you were being, you know, while your career was going on? Pretty much, actually, more of the stage acting, if you would call it stage performances, was actually my live band. And then we started, mm -hmm. we traveled a little bit in California and in Nevada, and we played live. What was the name of your band? Week, Sundance. Sundance? And it was an all girl band. All girl band. What Way kind back of music? in the 80s. That was not very normal. No, you had the Bangles, the Go Go's, yeah, and a few, but. but yeah, yeah, but no, but still, in the Bay Area. Mm. All right. It was Sundance, awesome. Sundance, okay. Mm -hmm. And what kind of music did you play? Well, we did the covers, you know, mm -hmm. top 40 back then. And then we started getting really, um, we fell in love with the blues and jazz. Right. And we were hired by some really beautiful lounges, and they mm -hmm. wanted the quieter music. So we then transitioned into jazzy stuff, and we really, we really did well with that. Wow. Live streaming, Mendocino Media Makers, Cindy Lemus with us here. So what what instrument did you play? What was My voice. You were just a singer. Yes. They didn't I give you tambourine. Keyboards. Oh, did you? Did you I, I you know, but I I like to move too much. And uh, the cordless mic was out. By the know. way, we have our harness to the chair here tonight, so <coughs> actually it's very true. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, you used to uh, smoke. Yes. And then now that you have to sit here and not have a cigarette, I, I have a little something here in my pocket that I took from her before the show started. This is, I guess, the latest contraption for people who are quit, quitting smoking, and this is a, a device that, that is basically, I guess, a, a fake cigarette. It's like, like a pen. It's plastic. And uh, why don't you tell us about this? And go ahead, feel free to smoke now that I've uh, put you on the spot here. <laughs> and uh, the, no fire hazard here. Don't call the fire marshal. I know. This is uh, an amazing <laughs> Don't little, uh, start smoking, This kids. is not an infomercial either. I'm just right. curious about this device. What? Well, actually, it just has the nicotine. It has none of the tar or the carcinogens, none of that. Mm -hmm. And I quit smoking because I wanted to get back into my singing. Mm -hmm. And as a smoker and singing for all of these years, Instead of being a high alto to soprano, I was literally about the lowest alto that you can get to, and I, w I didn't have a voice. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, two year, almost two years ago, just said, "Heck with it, I'm quitting." And I had a hard time with not with quitting the habit of smoking, which is what most people have a hard time with, and that's right. putting the cigarette. Mm. Oh, it even glows. And it my goodness, it looked like I know. some smoke actually. I came know. Out. It's a vapor. It's a vapor. So wow. They must it have developed those for like the stage initially or something. Actually, I think they did. In oh. fact, um, oh, I forgot the actor. Ooh, he's so good looking, too. Um, <laughs> it'll come to her then. It'll just come to out. me, but he was in the pirate film. Mm. Not Johnny Depp. Depp. Oh, okay. Johnny Depp. I had, I had to go through the visual of him, but uh, he actually definitely. 
I mean, he got this started hmm. because he is a smoker, and this is what he was quitting with. And they even used it, I think, in one of his films. Hmm. So. Now, listen, by the way, if you're into Hollywood and some Hollywood stars stick around because our second guest we're going to get into that just a little bit mm -hmm. but we have some stars some budding stars in our studio audience here and we're going to check with them in a moment but uh, Cindy I think we've got uh, do we have that I don't uh, hopefully we've got that other video there's a song we, we want we were talking about her voice and uh, it's great that she was able to quit smoking and uh, we we're kind of making light of that but that it's great that she can uh, sing again and and we've got an example i believe if we can cue this up of her singing and uh we'll talk about the song here when we come back but hopefully we can get this queued up and ready to go this is live mendocino media bakers cindy lemos on vocals Blue garden spies for That was just a little sample of Cindy singing there and some guitar work. And you might notice we have a few more uh, people in the shot here in our studios. We have some uh, cast members from the Susical the Musical, the production that will be showing here uh, beginning on April 5th and uh, showing for a few weekends. And so uh, why don't we introduce our guests here and why don't you uh, introduce yourselves. Who do we have here? Your name? Uh, Adam Martinez. Adam Martinez, and you are Edward playing Martinez. Edward. I'm sorry, Edward. Don't don't feel bad about correcting me. It happens all the time. I'm married. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and you play Cat in the Hat, correct, Edward? Yep. Okay. And you are Ruby, right? Ruby Setnick. Okay. And um, I play the Sour Kangaroo. The Sour Kangaroo. Okay. And uh, who do you have here? I'm Sarah. Green. Edward, don't go away. You stay up here first. <laughs> and I play Gertrude McBuzz. Okay, and? I'm Jonas Reeves, and I play Horton the Elephant. Horton the Elephant. All right, now, this particular show, I understand, is uh, not just uh, one story from Dr. Seuss. This is sort of a combination of different uh, yeah. Dr. Seuss stories. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, your generation, are you familiar with Dr. Seuss? Was this introduced to you? I, I am, slightly. I, I, not as much as people who are older than me might, but when right. I was younger, I did read some Dr. Seuss, so I do know kind of what it's like, the style. I How about you, Sarah? How about you, Ruby? I used to have um, a giant, doc we still have it, is a giant Dr. Seuss book with a bunch of different stories in it. My you mom read it to me every night. It's, okay. it's actually where I memorized the monologue, which I auditioned with, is from that book. All right. And this is a musical, too. So you've got the fun, lovable characters from Dr. Seuss. You've got music. You've got local talent. And uh, you mentioned, uh, Cindy, the, the producer, you want, you want you want co-credit on this. I mentioned you were the producer. But she gets main credit. Okay. Jana, Janice Luttrell. Yes. Okay. She it, She's the producer and she works day and night on doing these productions for these kids. And I'm just a tag along. This is my first time in this rodeo with Gloriana and it's just been magical. And I love doing anything for these kids. Well, one of the great things about our local Gloriana Theater Company is they do involve kids. They mm -hmm. always have been involving kids. Even the uh, shows back when I used to be involved many decades ago, we uh, we had uh, kids in the cast. They were part of the you know part of the whole uh, family of the theater. So how are rehearsals going, Edward? Why don't you take this? You're the cat in the hat. <laughs> uh, the rehearsals in the play have been going good. Uh huh. Practicing every day. 
my practicing my lines, trying to get them right, nailed down right. in my head, <laughs> and Must be memori yeah, memorizing <laughs> all those letters. And <laughs> How about the set? How about the set? Now this has got to be fun, Sarah. Why don't you take it's this one? It's incredible. It's all colors and just very Seuss look. Mm -hmm. Just all the books just coming to life. It's really cool. All right. Done by Patty Deloche. Yes. <laughs> gotta Patty give Deloche. her credit. Oh my gosh, okay. she's the artist that just you feel like you literally w are walking into a Dr. Seuss 3D book. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable. All right, well, let's get to some logistics then. Where's the show going to be? Eagles Hall. Eagles Hall. It's on Quarry Street, Fort Bragg. Right. And around, it opens April 5th, correct? Right. And Rounds. it'll be for three weekends, and it'll be Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday matinees. Okay. So you have no excuse. You cannot miss the show. You have three days on a weekend in three weeks that you can come. And an easy phone number for tickets, I think it's 964-SHOW, is that right? 964-SHOW for folks in Willits. Perfect. <laughs> 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 Sorry about that. <laughs> and there's still time if someone would like to become a sponsor for one individual night. So they can okay. certainly call that number as well and support the youth of our community. Well, it's great the, uh, the kids have uh, a real positive thing that they can be involved in and uh, theater teaches so many lessons and confidence uh, goes on. What, are you guys picking up feeling a little more bounce in your step when uh, when you get out there on stage? Like you're part of something a little bigger than uh, Fort Bragg High? <laughs> <laughs> if you don't trip over the set. <laughs> right. I bet. Well, a set like that, I bet you could trip over it rather easily. Okay, well, listen, we do have sponsors that make it possible to bring you Mendocino Media Makers. We're going to hear from them in a moment, and we're going to bring on our second guest. And don't go away. We've got some more excitement coming up on tonight's show. So stay with us here on Mendocino Media Makers, live streaming from the company store. Blue Garden Spa is Fort Bragg's premier five-star spa, offering a wide variety of indulgent and relaxing treatments. We have five luxurious treatment rooms, two private tranquility suites with soap tubs and saunas. Our certified massage therapists are proficient in both functional body work and deep tissue massage. We make many of our bath additives and body treatments in-house using only the finest natural ingredients. Call 962-9396 to make an appointment today. Vicky Ray Salon, a European style salon with 30 years experience offering the finest hair color, cutting, and products. Enhance and transform. We find your style for everyday and special occasions. Color consultations, weddings, makeup, waxing. Appointments encouraged. 11 a.m. to perfection. Located in Fort Bragg's company store. Call 707-964-7385. The Mendocino Cookie Company and Zappa's Internet Cafe. Internet access, gourmet cookies, muffins, scones, pastry, espresso drinks, and more. 301 North Main Street, Fort Bragg. Open 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily. Send an elegant tin to your loved ones, friends, or clients at www.mendocinocookies.com or call toll-free 1-888-937-4842. Let us help you make someone's day. Hi, I'm Charlie Lorenz. Come join me on a scuba diving tour, a kayak diving adventure, or an abalone hunt here along the beautiful Mendocino coast of Northern California. Call Charlie at North Coast Discovery, 707-937-2091. That's 937-2091. Hello and welcome back to Mendocino Media Makers. I'm Lindy Peters. We're live streaming here on the internet from our studios here in the company store. Now our second guest has uh, quite a career. Uh, her day job, I guess you could say, is, uh, is cutting hair at a beauty salon. But her night job, her second job, is going down to Hollywood, to various locations where Hollywood is shooting and doing makeup for the Hollywood stars. She's been at it for 20 years and uh, she somehow ended up here on the Mendocino Coast. We're gonna find out how that happened and find out what it's like 
to put makeup on a star's face. I mean, you're like two inches away looking right at this person. And uh, I'm sure she's got some stories she's going to share with us tonight. So we're looking forward to that. Patty Androff is our guest. Here's more. It's just delightful. Everybody worked so hard to make it. The costumes, wardrobe, sets, lighting. And most of these people were volunteers. So I had a really good time doing it. As far as our department, the makeup, makeup and hair department, we just did our job, and if something was wrong, we'd go to Cindy, and it would be taken care of. None of the craziness that I've experienced, even on big movies. All right, and we're back with our second guest tonight. Patty Androff is our guest, and she has done makeup for many Hollywood movies. We'll get into those in a moment, but she's here in our studios, and somehow... Found her way to the Mendocino Coast, like all of us that are here. Uh, I guess, again, that's my first question. Uh, what, you know, where'd you grow up and how'd you end up here? Um, I grew up in New York, upstate New York. Came mm -hmm. to California in the late 70s. And I wanted to be a makeup artist. So I started going to school, hair school, theater. Well, stayed in L.A. and got my first job in 1979, 1980. And, um, but how would you, I mean, how did you come up with a career? You wanted to be a makeup artist. Now, here's Cindy. They're, they're telling her teachers, telling her parents to get her in ballet school because she's. Keep her still. Yeah, but, uh, you know, a makeup, at, at that young age, uh, what, what drew you to, to becoming a makeup artist to begin with, that career choice? How did that. I don't know. I always watched movies when I was a kid, and I would always, my mom would tell me that I would always say, I want to do that. I want to do that. And mm -hmm. I would point to the monsters or whatever. And so I guess I just started going to theater school and um, hair school. And it just, it doesn't happen overnight. It's a lot of hard work. Yeah, yeah. So how'd you get your first break? So that you went to school. This is something you wanted to do. You followed your career path, which is something, you know, kids should, should really you know, live, live out your dream if you can. And, and so then how'd you get your break? Because that's the, Hollywood, no matter what level you're on, is very difficult to break into. It's, I don't know, it just happened. I had some friends who were camera people and who were set decorators and I was in hair school in Hollywood and they came into the school one day and said, do you want to go do a movie in Texas? And I'm 28 years old and I went, well okay. So <laughs> <laughs> and what movie was that? <laughs> it was Juan Seguin, The War Between Texas and Mexico. Uh -huh. And this woman, her name was Aunt Elaine, she, I, she met me off the plane, took me with her, and showed me how to work on a set. Showed me how to do the things that you, you should do when you're working, doing makeup. And mm -hmm. ever since then, I've just been doing that. I've been a makeup artist. Wow. Well, a couple other things too: right. bartender, waitress. While I was becoming a makeup artist. <laughs> right. Right. Now, h how does the process work? If you're, you're, you're chosen, let's say, to be the makeup artist, um, and do they bring you in and they say, these are the costume colors that you'll be working with, Th this is the scene, you know, the back colors, or, uh, you know, do they show you the star's skin tone, you know, how, how, how do you get brought into this, and what, you know, what, what goes on on your end? Because every bit of action in Hollywood, there's so many people behind the scenes. Correct. We all meet, we'll have a production meeting. Mm -hmm. You read the script, you break it down. You're gonna have, you know, so many actors. The makeup, hair and wardrobe, director. We have a big production meeting. All the, all the departments meet. Stunts, props, makeup, hair, wardrobe, producers, directors. And they kind of go through the script and if you have any questions, um, okay, does this guy have a cut? How many days does he have a cut, you know? How big is it? What color wardrobe is he wearing? So we all get to meet with the director all at once and then individually if we have any questions. But everybody has a job in the movie business. We don't do two or three jobs. We do one job. We do right. makeup. So we design our characters, go to the director and say, is this what you're looking for? And he'll either say yes or no. You'll usually have a test. He'll either like it or hate it, and then you'll have to do redo it again if he hates it. And usually, with everyone working together, 
we come up with a character that's acceptable to everybody. Mm -hmm. But, you know, of course, the director has the last say. Not the movie star. No. Not usually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, can we talk about some of the movies you've worked on and maybe get some recollections you might have of working on those movies? Oh, How gosh. about uh, Dances with Wolves? Kevin Costner, big star. That was a huge hit, box office hit. And it also had a social message that I think was quite powerful. It was an amazing movie. We were five months in um, Rapid City, South Dakota, and Pierce, South Dakota, in five freezing months. weather. Yeah, five months. And we, it was only supposed to be shot for three months. And uh, um, they were going to pull the plug. They were going to stop production. They were going to save no more money. And Kevin Costner and Jim Wilson came up with their own money, and we stayed an extra 40 days to finish this movie. That's why it's three hours instead of two hours long. Wow. Because Kevin was so power, he was just so adamant about this movie had to be this long because that story had to be told. Yeah. What an amazing story. It was beautiful. It was incredible. We spent three months researching costumes, wardrobe, makeup. We did not want to insult anyone. We wanted to get the Indian paintings, the face right. painting and the body painting correct. We were out there at 4 o'clock in the morning covering tattoos to put Native American tattoos from, you know, the Sioux tribe. So we were correct in doing it. Yeah. People don't realize that. You know, there might be uh, an Indian, uh, Native American, if you will, on a, on a horse, uh, 30 people deep into a scene with a little tattoo that you're probably not even going to see, but gosh darn it, they make sure it's correct, probably for his sake, playing the part to get into it, and, and just, they're, they're just, every detail. It's All amazing. kinds of real small details, down to the beading on the, on their dresses, the, the Native American women's dresses, everything was researched. Hmm. That's why we, it just came out so beautiful. Everybody was so proud of it. That was a great movie. Thank One of my you. favorites. Uh, how about uh, The Hangover? Let's, let's uh, switch gears here. <laughs> Another very serious movie with a strong social message. Oh, God. Uh, he's, he's that, that movie, uh, when, when you were making it, did you have any idea that it would become sort of the cult hit that became? <laughs> no. We were kind of rolling our eyes going, really? <laughs> <laughs> but um, the actors were great. Mm -hmm. You know, it was great. We went to Las Vegas. We were everywhere. But no, we did not know it was going to be that huge of a hit. Just all, we were all pretty stunned. <laughs> and it's still still rolling, and you're still involved, correct? I just did the last one, Hangover Three. Hangover Three, and when's that two out? <laughs> Probably summer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any funny stories from that uh, that particular experience that you want to share with us, or that you can think of? I can't. We just worked so hard on that show. We um, we were everywhere. In the wind, we were up in the turbines in Tehachapi. We were in Mojave. We were just everywhere. How about that, uh, the Michael Tyson tattoo? <laughs> and, uh, we, did you do that on the, on, the, on the other actors? I didn't do the tattoo. A friend of mine did. But in this movie, Ed the, um, Stu, he gets, he gets the tattoo lasered off. So every day I had to put a scar on that looks like he has a lasered off tattoo. Okay. So it was. How long did that take to, to that one process of putting that on each day? It doesn't take long. You That's just long. have to um, spend all day with them because mm -hmm. it's not real. So it lifts, and you have to glue it back down, and you have to color it, and you have to hurry up because somebody's yelling at you to rolling, rolling, get out of the right. way. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. Uh, I've got a few others I want to talk to you about. Uh, one that was uh, a, another great movie was The Blind Side, and Sandra Bullock, of course, uh, won the Best Actress. That was a great movie. Oscar for that. What was it like working on that? Because that's a little more real. That's not quite as uh, maybe, uh, you, you know, um, as difficult as Dances with Wolves or whatever in terms of research and that sort of thing. But that movie also was a, was a special movie, and it touched a lot of people, and the, again, was kind of a sleeper. People probably yeah. weren't, you know, didn't think it was going to be as powerful as it was. What was it like working on that one? It was great. Um, I did Tim McGraw's hair, mm -hmm. and um, it was just nice. Usually when I work, I have to do two or three or four or five people. So it's nice being on a set with just doing one actor, and Cedric Bullock was wonderful, and the whole crew was just 
you know, we get to spend some time in Atlanta, mm -hmm. in, in the old part of Atlanta, so that was kind of nice. Yeah. And Tim is wonderful to work with. Without a cowboy hat. Yeah. <laughs> He's got to have that perfect hair. <laughs> yeah. And here's one that was a, a fun movie that I imagine required a little research and uh, challenge was Tombstone. Yeah. Oh, man. It was like 112. And these guys would have on those long... Re they were made out of the material that they made the actual dusters, those long coats. Mm -hmm. they, ma they were made out of the actual wool. People were passing out. It was just... It was insane. Did they film it at Tombstone in Arizona, the actual town, or did they film <coughs> the set anymore? No. I'm trying to think. Um, we we did go to Tombstone, mm -hmm. but they built the set at the Tucson. There's a, t a ranch in Tucson uh -huh. that they shoot a lot of movies at. Okay. We're talking to Patty Androff, if you just joined us here, live streaming on Mendocino Media Makers, the Hollywood makeup artist who has... Uh, also, somehow ended up here on the Mendocino Coast. So we know you've worked down there. We heard how you got there. <laughs> now, how did you make that transition from uh, from there up to here? Did you know I somebody, know. family members, or how did you end up in, on the Mendocino Coast? I would come up here um, quite often. My family lived in Ukiah, my mom, my mom and dad. Mm -hmm. And I would come here and come to Fort Bragg. And I just fell in love with this coastline. Mm -hmm. And after 20-some years in L.A., I figured I did my time. So I got to come up move up here. In 97, I came up here. And you still get called to work on I on still movies. get calls. Now, um, let me ask you about the, uh, did you miss a, a television show? Did I overhear? Th did yes. You, uh, did somebody <laughs> from, uh, from the Nashville TV show try and get a hold of you? Yes. What happened there? I got the wrong, I sent it to the wrong email address saying, yes, I'm available. I'll work. So they didn't get the letter. They didn't get my email in time. Mm -hmm. So they hired someone else. I missed it by like two hours. <laughs> so, so those things happen. Yeah. Even to even to folks like you. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> well, what? How do you do, do? People contact you, or do you have an agent? I mean, how do you how do you end up working on films? I'm I'm sure you've had enough experience, and I've just mentioned a few of the films Patty's worked on here, folks. Uh, I, I mean, I'm sure your reputation uh, precedes you in a good way, <laughs> which in Hollywood, <laughs> that's not always the case. But do they find you, or do you have an agent, or how does it work? I have a lot of friends, and we all just have, it's like a little network of people that we all call each other when we get a job. You want to work? Mm -hmm. You want to work? Or we have what we call a production report in our union. Mm -hmm. And you can log on and look and see what's coming up and submit your resume for a job. But usually it's by word of mouth. Mm -hmm. We have the same, I've worked with the same people for years. Right. Now, have you done any work for, say, like an award show? Does, does someone call you up and say, oh, my goodness, I have to, you know, get on the red carpet Friday night? I Can you come down? Or do no, you, no, I haven't like done that? much of that. No? How about here locally? Are there people that need special things done? Uh, I mean, I, kn I know you're not an, an undertaker, <laughs> but <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, sometimes uh, people will, will uh, you know, need something done, you know, a special makeup job or something like that. Have you? Well, I'm helping out with Suzuko yeah. with the well, kids. There you go. We're trying yeah. to nail down the nope. faces and the characters and all that. I'll bet that is fun, and that's I'm a real challenge. A good time. Yeah. You're trying to create characters that you can put on fast and look cute. And don't, you know, and also so the kids don't lose their expressions and all, you know all that. So it's I've been there almost every day, thinking, okay, what can I do better? What can I do better, faster? Mm -hmm. So it's all coming together. I like yeah. enjoy doing that. Right. Have she you helped done with the haunted house too? And did some of the haunted house. Mm -hmm. Those are some pretty scary people. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we had fun. We had fun. Yeah. But sometimes, have you done a horror movie where, where they're supposed to look scary and there, there isn't anything really funny about it? You know, any, any yeah, of we've done, I've done lots of Civil War movies. Mm -hmm. Did lots of blood and gore on those. Yeah. Um, it's pretty interesting when you have to do some pretty awful stuff. Right. And have special things made. But right. real horror movies, I don't think I've done lots of horror. I did John Carpenter's They Live. We had to make skeletons. That was mm -hmm. kind of fun. <laughs> now, some jobs in Hollywood, because of the internet and because of computer technology, set designers, for example, are you know maybe not as uh, important as they once were. And what about makeup? Now, do, do, can people use computer? Has computer 
uh, technology caught up with makeup artists so that they can, you know, like you put a green background and you can put someone almost anywhere. Is it getting to the point where they might be doing this with, with actors' faces? We or? hope not. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hope no, not, too. Oh, I'll be on unemployment. I, it's, it's a real art, uh, but... But I think the technology, if, if it were me and I were a young kid wanting to do something in the movie business, I would go back to school and learn all that digital CGI. It's amazing to me. I go to movies to watch this these characters come to life that these computers are doing. Mm -hmm. Along, you know, with the, put a, a talking lion next to a real person. Right. It's amazing to me what they can do. Right. So, you know, makeup and CGI work pretty good together. Well, good. That's good to hear. Yeah. <laughs> a little job security You won't there. be out of a job for a while. Yeah, so. yeah. You know, we have a second commercial break we're going to take here on Mendocino Media Makers. And when we come back, we're going to chat to both Patty and Cindy here about some of the uh, things that they're doing and their upcoming projects. So stay with us here. We're going to take just a quick break. I'm Lindy Peters for Mendocino Vicky Media Vicky Ray Makers. Salon, a European-style salon with 30 years' experience, offering the finest hair color, cutting, and products enhance and transform we find your style for everyday and special occasions color consultations weddings makeup waxing appointments encouraged 11 a.m. to perfection located in Fort Bragg's company store call 707-964-7385 hi I'm Charlie Lorenz come join me on a scuba diving tour, a kayak diving adventure, or an abalone hunt here along the beautiful Mendocino coast of Northern California. Call Charlie at North Coast Discovery, 707-937-2091. That's 937-2091. Bamboo Garden Spa is Fort Bragg's premier five-star spa, offering a wide variety of indulgent and relaxing treatments. We have five luxurious treatment rooms, Two private tranquility suites with soap tubs and saunas. Our certified massage therapists are proficient in both functional body work and deep tissue massage. We make many of our bath additives and body treatments in-house using only the finest natural ingredients. Call 962-9396 to make an appointment today. The Mendocino Cookie Company and Zappa's Internet Cafe. Internet access, gourmet cookies, muffins, scones, pastry, espresso drinks and more. 301 North Main Street, Fort Bragg. Open 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily. Send an elegant tin to your loved ones, friends, or clients at www.mendocinocookies.com or call toll-free 1-888-937-4842. Let us help you make someone's day. And good evening. We're once again here with Mendocino Media Makers. I'm your host, Lindy Peters. We're live streaming here on the Internet the uh, company store deep dark in the studios here with our studio audience and uh, we're on the final part of our show we still have plenty of time left and if you folks have anything you want to ask either of our guests patty or cindy uh, you're invited to do so you can call 964-0101 and uh, there should be a little chat box there on your internet screen you can uh, put a little question in there as well and uh, we'd be happy to relay it to our guests here so uh Cindy, you two ended up working together on Sizical the Musical. Have you worked together before on any other projects? That yes, you do? yes. Actually, we met because of Sundays, Sundays. Correct. the web series that was filmed here on the coast. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's I produced. We want to talk about that. We met Patty, I'll never forget, we met at the Headlands yes. Coffee House. <laughs> and we were so excited. We have this web series that we're going to do, and we're going to film it on the Mendocino Coast, and it's going to be 10 episodes, and we, we heard that you're a makeup on artist and would love to have you. And we knew her background already because, you know, she's gotten <laughs> some awards for her work as well. And, and so, you know, we were just kind of like <gasps> bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and kind of starstruck even talking <laughs> with her. And she said, okay. And I thought, oh. <gasps> Oh my gosh, we got Patty on drop. <laughs> it was it was great. It, and so and we clicked instantly. I mean, she's she's got a great work ethic and also she taught other people that were on set how to do makeup as well. She's 
what I've enjoyed because she then I got her involved with the Haunted Hall of Horrors. <laughs> and she likes to help people learn how to do this craft. And mm -hmm. so she taught several people how to do specific special effects, like with the zombie makeup. And she said, oh, see, you just do this. <gasps> just magic, you know, <laughs> and, um, and patience of a saint. And so she was just awesome to work with. Thanks. And then knowing that she's part of Susical and working with the kids, it's, I mean, they, they, these kids, this production has top notch. Back to your, now you did an internet TV show. Yes. Let's talk about that for a moment here. You did 10 episodes. Right. And it was called? Sundays. Sundays. Mm -hmm. And you used local people. Yes. Shot locally, and there were what 15 minutes. I actually actually there were like 10 minutes. 10 each. minutes. I remember right. I watched the when they first you came up for a radio interview. Right. I was doing. We talked about it, and I watched. I think the first or second episode. It looked like fun. Yes, you it guys was. Had a lot of fun with that. Yeah, it was, and the cinematography it really showed off this area. Mm -hmm. uh, the cast and crew were unbelievable. I mean, just incredible talent, and they captured the essence of Mendocino and Mendocino Coast and uh, we and then you know th there were so many people that allowed us to use their homes for free and their private properties and the sheriff's department was awesome to work with when we needed a street closure and the mm -hmm. film office here the Mendocino County Film Office helped us with any permits that we needed and really treated us professionally like a you know a real Hollywood film production team, right. where we really were, we did behave like yeah. pr a professional yes, film good. team. And right. um, but yeah, it was great fun, and we've got a lot of awards for the show right. in the web series world <coughs> as far right. as best cast ensemble and uh, uh, just the gamut and cinematography and directing and producing all the, right. the whole thing. So we're very proud of it. Is there any, Patty, you've worked both on television shows and movies. Is there any difference between the two? Is a, is a makeup similar? To, is there a similar process you go through, or are the lights different? Or I know it's different perhaps each project, but I mean, in yeah. gen generally speaking, are they almost the same? Or Television moves a lot faster. Mm -hmm. They'll do, you know, in, in a movie you'll do maybe one and a half, two pages a day. Television you'll do seven or eight pages of dialogue and right. scenes and moving about but um, pre you know pretty much the makeup is the same every of course every project's different but right now you, have you ever had an instance where you, you did somebody's makeup just as you talked about and, they, and <coughs> they went out there for the shoot and the director went he looks like he's got a black eye back to makeup <laughs> yeah and they come back in and they go <coughs> well, Patty uh, yeah they <laughs> sent him back change it we hate it fix it <laughs> put more blood on what so is that is that does that bother you, or is that just nah, part of the job? No, we carry a bag with us, so right. okay. Well, let me fix it, Shh, and you can fix it right on the set. Or if it's an effect, you take them back to the makeup trailer. But right. usually, if the director doesn't like it, it's it's part of the job. Right. Now, are you kind of like a, a, a tool, you know, a, a, a contract person, like a carpenter or something? Do you actually have a set of makeup mm -hmm. rather a than bag, you know, a set yeah. of tools? You actually have a, a set that you that. that Necessary items. <laughs> yes, a little, handy. it looks like one of those Black and Decker tool bags, and does it really? Yeah, puffs <laughs> and sponges and brushes and yeah. hairspray and water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we even buy the Black and Decker bags, right? So we can drag them around out in the dirt and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Drive a pickup truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, are do you have any funny stories from some stars that you know, I'm kind of putting you on the spot? That you know, oh. the one-on-one -on -one stuff just. <coughs> I think the best story is from Dances with Wolves. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know if you if you guys have seen Dances with Wolves, but in it, when Kevin is stampeding the buffalo, mm -hmm. buffalo don't stampede. So in order to have them stampede, they had this one buffalo, and he was t trained to run. So then, naturally, the other buffaloes are going to follow him. The only reason tr Cody would run is because he knew if he got up to that barbed wire fence, there would be a bag of double-stuffed Oreos waiting for him. <laughs> <laughs> it was the best story ever. 
because then here comes all these buffalo and you can hear the ground thundering and here's Cody running to the barbed wire fence for his double stuffed Oreo. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good story. So I, that was one of my favorite things in, in movie land. Now, do you have any upcoming projects? Are, are you anything on hold? Like in a couple of weeks, you're going to go to work on something, or, or anything else you've done? You did Hangover Three. What else have you just recently completed that might not be in the theater? We yet? just I just finished that, and I have I don't know until a couple weeks in advance or right. month in advance. So I'm just going to stay here and paint faces for right. Gloria Susical. And and your day job, uh, you work in a salon here. I did. I used to own a salon here, and now I just do hair once in a while or mm -hmm. whenever someone needs it. Okay. But she does doggy treats. And I do dog biscuits. Yeah. Homemade you make dog, dog biscuits. biscuits? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do six different things up here. You make homemade <laughs> dog treats. Yes. <laughs> okay. Now, how did that how did that start? Was that like something you just one day looked up on the internet and, oh, I want to try this? Or yeah. Well, my dog has wheat allergies so I thought oh. I'm going to start baking my own treats mm -hmm. and now I bake them and they're in little kits you just dump everything in a in a bowl add hot water and roll them out and bake them and you have wheat free dog treats for available everywhere available <laughs> everywhere yeah. <laughs> we okay. hope soon yeah how about that <laughs> All right. How about you, Cindy? What uh, I know you're you're helping produce this show we've been talking about, right, Susan Gold, the musical. Right. What what else going on with you? Um, I'm recording a CD right now, mm -hmm. so that'll hopefully be out by the end of the summer, and that's exciting. Getting back into my music, um, might actually go for the Broadway musical coming up with Gloriana. So auditions are Saturday, so we'll see. And what's that show? When it's actually it's on Broadway, mm -hmm. and it's it's called on Broadway, and it'll be in August when it comes out here. So they'll do a, a, a variety of Broadway musical show pieces. Right. Yep. What are you going to audition? Well, the well the auditions are Saturday, so. Do you know what you're going to sing? Are you going to sing? Anything? I have not a clue. <laughs> oh. So I was very very fortunate to do the workshop with the director mm -hmm. and um, so I'm really looking forward to hopefully be able to work with him again and that'll be fun. Don Bovenglow? Yes, out? yes. He's, he's, oh. great. Yeah. he's awesome. He's magic in his own right so right. Uh, I'm looking forward to that and I let's see just getting ready for the Haunted Hall of Horrors again and that's a fundraiser for our local youth group. Okay, when, when, is that? When, when does that happen? Well, the Haunted Hall of Horrors is always right around Halloween, <laughs> and it'll be three nights again this year. Uh, but at the end of August, the Leo Club is actually going to be hosting a zombie walk in town, and it's <laughs> going to be it's going to be fun. So August twenty fourth. Get surprised by that. Yes, um, yes. August twenty fourth. The be, zombie walk. There wow. will be zombies walking along. Redwood, and it's a it's a set up walk, and hmm. it's a fundraiser for actually one of our Leos who um, we have who just came down with leukemia, and hmm. is having cancer treatments, and uh, she's getting uh, chemotherapy down in the Bay Area, and so we wanted to help out her family because they're traveling back and forth to San Francisco a lot, and so the kids wanted to do something, and because they love doing the haunted house which pays for scholarships and mm -hmm. helped with the anti-bully campaign at the middle school this year. Um, they said, let's keep in the theme of things and do a zombie walk in her name. So How about that? Yeah. That'll so be August 24th. August 24th. Look for the zombies. I imagine uh, Patty might we be might to you know, she's around <laughs> town. <laughs> I was just thinking, Zombies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, another thing I know Patty was working on, and it was up here, and it was thanks to film being brought up here, mm -hmm. um, is the Bank of America commercial. Uh, yes. And oh, yeah. Yeah. Is that, uh, are they showing that yet? Or? I don't know. I don't know. We've been it, looking. We're waiting. Right. But um, one thing that's really nice that I wanted to emphasize, too, and I know that you've said it as well, Patty, is that we've been trying to get film back up yeah. And fall in love with us again in, on the Mendocino Coast. And I know the film office has been working hard to make that happen. And DreamWorks is here right now. 
uh, to filming the Need for Speed, so that's here. Right. And um, it's they're coming back and Michael having, Keaton, uh, having way, our local one. makeup artist Yay. here right. helps, and it, and they're realizing and they're tapping into the talent that we do have. Right. They've already hired a ton, over 30 people here on the coast. Mm -hmm. We've got 200 rooms already booked right. on the coast. They, they're hiring our own caterers. They're hiring our own people. And can't go wrong with that no. to boost the economy. Well, and, you know, the film industry was here. The history is here. Yeah. Uh, yes. The Russians are coming. The Russians are coming. Um, you know, that dates a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, uh, what was that? The summer of '42 was filmed here. Same and, time uh, next year. Right. Murder, she wrote. Oh exactly. God. So there's there's a there's yeah. a history of, of film here, and for one reason or another, political reasons, possibly uh, the film industry shied away from uh, the Mendocino Coast for a long time. So it's nice to see them come back. Yeah. If I let me mention a couple of uh, celebrities here, and you can tell me whether you think their makeup is good or not. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Let's start with uh, Lady Gaga. <laughs> oh, <God>. she's <laughs> quite interesting. <laughs> Overdone, too yeah. much, not enough. What do you think? All of the, all of that. All of that? <laughs> Another fellow. Uh, uh, how about Richard Simmons? Oh my God! <laughs> he seems to sometimes put a little glitter on his face. Is that? Uh, I think so. Yeah. I think he wears those tights. I'm sure he wears those. Yeah. Pantyhose or something. Yeah. <laughs> or he waxes. I'm sure. <laughs> how about Sarah Palin? <laughs> She's lovely. You think she does? She does her a great job. Fine? Yes. Okay. And uh, how about uh, while we're on politics? How about Joe Biden? Oh, Silver <laughs> Joe. <laughs> you mean his makeup? Yeah. Well, <laughs> could he use any? Does, do he you looks like his fabulous. He looks fabulous. <laughs> yes. Okay. I'll. I'll you, you don't have to be on the spot anymore. You did work on uh, before we get. We have a couple more minutes here. I don't know if anybody's called in a question or not. But how about Beverly Hills nine zero two one zero? That was I a did that. huge show, and you were part of that for how long? Just a couple months. Couple they months. do something called double ups. Mm -hmm. They'll be shooting two episodes at the same time, so they hire two crews. I see. So I did that for a couple months. Right. That that was a. It was a huge show. The money was no object. Right. Yeah. Sets, makeup, hair, wardrobe, no object. Right. No, <laughs> that you want must it, be you got fun. It. Oh. Yeah. It was, fun. it was fun. Yeah. Now, if you had uh, your choice of uh, your, you know, your future, if if you could plan it out, and it, what, what would it be? Would, do you like where you are right now? Is everything the way you like it? Just getting a call here and now to to go down and do something, or mm -hmm. would you like to maybe have your own? company that provides makeup artists for the film industry or no, no nothing like it's that a, it's a tough business mm -hmm. it's a great business but it's a tough business you work long hours it's hard to get into but I encourage any kid that wants to be a makeup artist or anybody do it you just have to keep doing it though because it's like anything you just keep pursuing it right but 25 years later I'm happy on Mendocino Coast mm -hmm. I'd like to have a great big dog biscuit factory if I could do that. Well, there you go. <laughs> that might happen. <laughs> so, but All I love right. making movies. It's always been something I really enjoyed. Okay. How about you, Cindy? If you, uh, I would. I would say exactly what she said. You know, especially with the youngsters or the young teens. I should say, young adults in the audience is never <laughs> following your dream. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just mm -hmm. recently turn the big five zero and I'm still pursuing it and happy doing it and I found out that for instance music mm -hmm. is my love makes me happy makes my husband happy and <laughs> when I'm doing it and just never give up yeah never give up and if you have to back burner for, for a little bit fine but don't let it go right. if it really if it feeds your heart never give up right. that's right and the arts, it can be difficult. There's no question about right. it. And that it's dream, a tough, it's a it? tough dream to chase. But mm -hmm. uh, it's nice to see a couple of successful ladies here tonight. Thanks for being our guests. We certainly appreciate it. Thank it's you been for having fun. us. It's gone by rather quickly. And it was awesome with her. <laughs> I'm Lindy Peters, Mendocino Media Makers, coming to a close here. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll do it again next week, next Thursday, live streaming from our studios. Elena Guest will be uh, here, and uh, she's going to hypnotize me. Ooh. No. Maybe, I don't know. Just kidding. I want to mention, let's see, I have a list of folks I want to mention here before we go out, if I can find them. And if not, we'll just take care of that next week.
That's why I normally don't have a clipboard because uh, I don't know how to use them. So that's going to close our show. Thank you so much for watching us here live streaming from Mendocino Media Maker Studio here in the company store. I'm Lindy Peters. Join us again next Thursday night at 8, and we'll do it again. Thanks.